Hi everyone, this is Mike Chi. I want to give you guys an update on my latest project, the RetroTINK RGB edition. It's a Raspberry Pi hat that takes the display parallel interface signals and converts them to RGB plus horizontal and vertical synchronization. The connectors are broken out on 75 ohm B and C terminals, which allows you to connect it directly to your BVM or PVM monitor for the best possible video signal quality. But before I go into details about the RGB hat, I want to give you guys an update on the component version. I'm getting the production boards back from the factory on Monday, and I'll spend the rest of the week doing the final testing, and hopefully ship it to you before the end of the week. And really, thank you everyone for all your support. Now let's take a close look at the new RGB version. You'll notice that compared to the component hat, it's much simpler. The RGB version doesn't need the component video transcoder or the NTSC encoder. And the discrete resistor digital to analog converter has been replaced by just a single chip. In the component video hat, I used an R2R resistor network. Uh, that made it possible to go up to 8 bits for each of the RGB channels. That's a little higher resolution than the uh, typical Raspberry Pi analog video converter, um, which uh, is normally limited to 6 bits. But really the question I've been trying to answer is, is there a difference between um, a uh, resistor-based solution versus buying a chip from analog devices that's specifically engineered for video applications? So here I got my Raspberry Pi. Um, I'm going to connect my RGB hat now first. Now take a look at this. I have a stackable header installed on my uh, RGB hat. And the reason is because then I can place the component video hat right on top of it. So I can get all sorts of signals out at exactly the same time, driven from the exact same source. So here's the setup. I've got component video coming out from the hat. I've got S-Video, composite, and on the bottom tier I have RGB plus sync and that's all going to my PVM. The nice thing about this guy is it has two channels of RGB slash component, so I can do a direct comparison. All right, let's turn the PVM on. Um, I got this guy at a medical surplus last week. If you're looking for a PVM, I might recommend looking at a medical or university surplus. You'll probably find a better deal than on Craigslist. Alright, the first game I'm going to play is Super Mario 2. For testing, um, these Nintendo games actually work pretty well because it's really easy to spot video artifacts on simpler graphics. Okay, so let's try to find a quiet place where we can um, do some comparisons. I'm not usually that bad, I'm not paying attention right now. So here, let's get rid of this shy guy. So far we're running on component video, I'm about to switch over to RGB, back to component. Back to RGB. Not much of a difference so far. Now it's pretty hard to tell difference sitting far back, but I did notice um, that RGB was just a little bit sharper than component, and um, I'm going to try to really hammer in at why that is RGB. and uh, where you can see the difference. Take a close look at the outline of the tree. Um, as I switch back and forth, you'll notice that one mode has a little bit of a bleed on the right-hand side, and that's component. Now, just for comparison purposes, we can go through composite. Now, that's really blurry. We go from composite S video, sharpens up a little bit. Go to component, sharpens up some more, and go to RGB, that takes out the residual color bleed. So there you go, that's a difference. So that was a pretty surprising find. Um, theoretically, component should be as good as RGB. So I was poking around in a 240p test suite, and I noticed something interesting, the SMPTE test bars. Let's switch over from RGB to component. You'll see something interesting um, along the green to magenta transition. The edge here has uh, has some sort of a border, 
it isn't a clean transition as in the RGB. Take a close look at that weird edge in the component video output, but that doesn't exist in the RGB. Uh, I'm about to switch over. Perfectly smooth. So here um, I've connected the component output up to my FV310. I want to do a sanity check and try to figure out why that is. Um, is there something wrong with my circuit? Or um, is it because I'm using really cheap RCA cables that are designed for audio um, for video? Uh, what the problem is. So here's the color bar on the uh, FV310. And interesting enough, it's actually perfect. Um, there's a perfect transition between green and magenta. It looks exactly like the RGB output on the uh, PVM. Let's go back to Super Mario 2, now running on the uh, TV over component video. And here everything looks perfect. You can see the tree, um, there's no color bleed, it's nice and sharp, exactly like the RGB mode on the PVM. So it seems like the problem was just with the component video transcoder on the PVM, um, which is good. While we're on the subject, uh, and I might get some flack for this, but I have to say honestly the FV310 works a lot better than uh, the PVMs I've looked at. It has a sharper image, better colors, much better sound, and it only cost me 30 bucks. Well, I guess the conclusion is that the resistor-based uh, D-to-A converter works just as well as the chip. Um, you might see some differences in HD TV resolutions, but not probably not for 240p gaming. And the other good news is that there really isn't any degradation using component video versus RGB, as long as your monitor or TV is working correctly. So thanks for watching, guys, and uh, thank you to everyone that supported this project, especially Kevin and Michael, who've helped me immensely with getting the settings to work. Yeah, so everyone that's ordered a RetroTink C or S, um, I'm planning to get that done and shipped out to you by the end of next week, hopefully. I want to spend a few more days testing the RGB version, but that should be ready soon too. I think within uh, four or five weeks. Also working on a few other projects. Uh, we'll keep you guys updated. Uh, until then, uh, have fun.